Welcome to the fifth video in the series for the APM 2.5 and 2.6. In the previous videos, we've taken the board out of the packet, installed the firmware, configured it, put it on the model, checked it, and done other bits and pieces. Uh, we've talked about the modes that are available on the board, and now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the fail safes that are on there that you can set up. Now, all these fail safes are available as of 3.0 of the code and later. And there's actually four fail safes on the board to make sure that if something goes wrong, it doesn't end in disaster. Those four fail safes are throttle, battery, GPS, and ground station control. The GPS one is enabled by default, and it's the throttle one we're going to be looking at in this video. If you're interested in the battery one or the ground station control details, there's a lot of information on the copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki website, and in there is also details of the throttle fail safe that we're going to cover. So in the video, in the next seven or eight minutes, we'll talk about the receiver that you're going to need for this to work. We'll talk about how it works and what happens in what situation. And then we'll actually go into Mission Planner and set it up on one of my models. I'll actually demo it on the bench working and you can see it um, fire in. So the first thing we'll talk about is the receiver that you need for throttle failsafe. You need one that has a failsafe and all but really the cheapest uh, receiver will have this feature. You need to make sure that when the connection is lost between the transmitter and the receiver, the receiver will default to a certain set of pre-programmed values. So for example, on this model, I'm using the Spectrum receivers and they absolutely do this. The newer Hobby King uh, DSM-2 and DSM-X versions do it as well. The very first versions didn't. So when you lost control, the value of the channel stayed where it was when the connection was severed. That doesn't work for failsafe. You want the receiver that's on the model to put out a value that the APM recognizes as error and then can initiate the failsafe. And we're just talking here about the throttle channel that it has to do it on. You can check this on the bench and we'll see at the very end of the video how I just confirm that it's all working. But if it isn't working then and you're using one of the original um, orange receivers from Hobby King or one of the cheap and cheerful uh, DSM compatible receivers, that might be your problem. So now we said that, let's talk about how this thing works. So very simply put, if anything happens with um, the transmitter, the receiver power goes out, if, some, if the model goes out of range, if you have a wire that disconnects maybe one of the servo cables, or you have a failure of the PPM encoder, which is actually inside the, um, uh, the APM itself, and is the one that reads the throttle um, and channel inputs and converts those into signals that the APM microprocessor can understand, any one of those, this will work with. So it's not um, idiot proof, but it will save you 99 times out of 100. So let's imagine then in the first scenario um, that we've actually got the model on the ground, the throttle is at zero, we're in stabilize or acro mode, and we have one of those situations where the transmitter gives up, the receiver loses power, the a wire disconnects or the PPM encoder gives up. Doubtful we'll be out of range because we're probably only several feet away from where we're stood. In that instance, what will happen is that the, um, the, the unit will disarm. And we'll actually see that in the demo at the end. So that's very handy if something goes hiccup, the, the copter just fails safe, which is exactly what we want. Next one, let's talk about when we're flying the model um, less than two meters away from where we took it off. Um, can be any mode in this. When the fail safe kicks in, what actually happens is it just it then lands and um, puts itself down safely. So obviously you have to be careful that it isn't over your head when that happens, um, but I'm sure if uh, you saw it gently descending towards you, you get out of the way. Next one then, so what happens if, uh, if the model is outside of two meters, uh, but we don't have a GPS lock? Well, in that instance, it's exactly the same. As soon as the failsafe kicks in, it then throttles down and lands gently on its own power. Last thing then, what happens if you're way away, more than two meters, and you've got a great GPS lock, and you have that failure? 
well the, this is the cool part it initiates return to launch and it will then come back to where it was initialized and it will then hover there and then gently descend and for a more complete version of the RTL feature you can look at the fourth video in the series which talks about the modes that are available on the APM. So all that is really good stuff. The one that I um, really like is return to launch. I use that as one of my modes um, anyway so that at the end of a flight I can um, kind of bring it in more or less where I am pull the goggles off after I've initiated return to launch and the model will kind of land itself. But actually having that automatically happen if I fly out of range or something weird and wacky happens with radio is a great fail safe feature. And again, we discussed that in one of my other videos about introduction to FPV, that a return to home or return to launch feature as a oh my switch on the transmitter is a really important thing to have. Okay, so let's actually jump now into mission planner and i'll actually show you how you set this thing up so here we are in mission planner we will connect to the model that we're going to use i've um, plugged uh, the model into the computer using the usb cable i haven't got power applied to the rest of the model so you don't need it to set this up and check it and I've also got the radio connected so that we can see the throttle and other values live while we're in. Great, okay, so here we are connected. We're going to go back into initial setup, into mandatory hardware, and down into failsafe. And here you can see as I move the throttle up and down, channel 3 goes from 1026-ish all the way up to 1976. Now um, here is the failsafe option on the right hand side and here's your options you can either disable it, um, continue with mission in auto mode so um, if you think you're going to fly farther away than the radio can reach as part of a mission you select that one, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, always land, I, as soon as you lose the signal land it no matter if You've got a 3D fix or not, but we're going to have enable RTL. Now, this um, failsafe pulse width is 990, it's 975 by default um, because I can get down to below 990. So, what you need to do is at the very bottom of the throttle, my bottom throttle is 1026, 27, it's wumbling around slightly. What I need to do is go into the radio and extend the end points for the throttle to increase that so I get down to a low value, which if I can get below 1975-ish, <clears throat> so about there. So I've had to increase my throttle by about another 11-12% to get down. So now my throttle goes all the way to the top but actually has a um, lower value. Now we need at least ideally 15 to 20 between the value here at the low throttle and the value that we're setting here at the uh, failsafe level. So anything below 990 will be considered failsafe. Now we've done that what I'll do is I will rebind the model and then I will set the end point back to where it was so that when I disconnect the radio this is the value that will be sent to the APM. So let me just rebind to the receiver with the radio set like this and then we'll come back. Okay, so now in between these two bits of Mission Planner, I installed the bind plug and then bound, rebound the transmitter to the model with that lower endpoint for throttle. Once I'd done that, disconnected everything and then returned the endpoint of the radio back to where it was. So now we'll test that it all works. So what we'll do is we will connect the model and then we'll actually uh, arm the model but again we're only connecting via the USB cable that's applying the 5 volts so there's no power to the ESC so the motors can't start but if you are doing this with LiPo power make sure the rotors are off 
So there we are, we're connected. We're going to go into initial setup, mandatory hardware, fail safe. And then in here, you can see that now with the radio back as it was, channel 3, which is throttle, it's going back from 1026.27 up to 19.76 as it was before. So that's all working. Right. So what we'll do is we'll actually hold the um, throttle down to the lowest right position for five seconds. And then you'll see it'll say here armed. There we go, now it's ready. Now what should happen is when I turn the radio off, you'll see the radio three channel, which is throttle drop below 990 and it will disarm. There it is, fantastic. Okay, so let me turn the radio back on and there we are, we've got that value back to 1027. So now we can see that if we lose the radio or something nasty happens, the board will return to launch as long as it's got that 3D fix. So hopefully that's useful for those of you who are looking to set this up. I would absolutely do it before you go and fly it out in the field. And then if anything nasty happens, you don't lose your model and it lands in front of you rather than in somebody's back garden or um, on their property. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. My help out available is channel is available if you need to talk to me. And happy flying.